picture was sent to me on Twitter. And honestly, I did not notice this. This blew me away when I saw the picture. It took me a moment to grasp what was going on. And I never knew this was a thing. I don't even remember it from the manga. So I'm going to have to go back in the earlier section of the manga to look this up just to see. But here you go. Here's the picture on screen for you to see for yourself. Now, look at the picture real quick and tell me if you see anything off about it. You most likely might not notice because it took me a second to really grasp what was wrong here until, you know, it was pointed out to me. I'm like, oh, God, look closely at our invisible girl. Headband. Okay. She has pants. Clothing, obviously, is invisible. She has no fucking shirt. She has no bra. That means... She is not wearing any clothing on her chest area. She's straight up just letting her opa fly out. I I don't remember this from the manga. Like, I, I, I seriously need to go back to the manga, the earlier chapters, and see this for myself. Because that, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, what? Like, she's straight up nude. Because there's no other explanation for that. There, there is no other explanation for that. There's no way that's an animation error. Because the studio even said they're way ahead of production. So th there's just no way that's an animation error. Especially when you have pants on and a fucking headband. On. Like, yo, she's nude. She's straight up fucking... Horikoshi, did you do that? Like, I, I don't even remember. Did he really do that? I seriously need to check out the chapter after this chat, Like, after this review. I was going to say chapter again. I want to check out that chapter after I know this review. I need to know... If that was a thing, because I never noticed that. Just like, holy shit. So anyways, though, one thing that this episode brings to the table is the pressure of being in the number one spot. Now, this is something I kind of dived into in my, you know, last review of Boku no Hero Academia. But I kind of want to dive into it a little bit more in depth since it was the big focus of this episode when it came to Izuku and what he had to overcome with his team. So the big point here is that Izuku, he is in the number one spot. As we know, he secured victory and he became number one, which has caused it to where he is the golden snitch. If anyone can grab his headband and hold on to it before the timer runs out, automatic win. It's insta win. Regardless of how many headbands you grab, if you can grab Izuku's headband and hold it, you automatically win. So because of this, it puts Izuku in a spot to where there's a lot of pressure, a lot of attention focused on him, and that's exactly what happens with pro heroes. We know about pro heroes, we know how they've been introduced and how there's rankings, we know how companies, they compete with each other and all that, and sometimes companies, they need to work together. That was pointed out with this episode, and it's kind of like a business in a way, if you look at it like this. It's like companies that are their own different sections, sometimes they have to work together, and sometimes they compete with each other to get job offers or, you know, do hero work or whatever, and that's what you see constantly, and also, as we know, there's a ranking system. You have All Might, Endeavor and all that and the heroes underneath we know there's a ranking system and obviously if you're in the number one spot you get more popularity more people notice you probably more job offers you know all those different type of things so obviously the people underneath the number one hero wants to just drag the number one hero off his pedestal and become number one that's basically the point there and so because of this this episode was pointing out the pressure that All Might always has to deal with when he is doing his job but also what Izuku needs to understand and be able to deal with in the future because if he wants to become a pro hero, if he wants to become the number one hero, if he wants to become the next All Might, he needs to know that he needs to deal with this pressure. He needs to know that everybody's going to be looking at him, paying attention to him, and they're going to try to make sure he fails. Just rip him out and just make sure he falls to the ground. They don't want this man to succeed at all. That's kind of how companies are. They want to compete and win. And But also, this entire you know battle, this cavalry battle, is also showcasing how sometimes companies need to work together. You have it to where a bunch of heroes that may never work together or you know heroes from different organizations might come together to do an operation and be able to succeed whatever they're doing against villains. And that's kind of what this was trying to point out. So you need to know what the individual quirk that, you know, maybe the opposing company has. Even if you're not a part of the same company, it's best if you learn what they can do or what they're capable of for when, if you're ever forced into that situation when you need to work with them, you know what to expect from them and what they can and cannot do. And that's kind of what was happening here and why Izuku was realizing what type of mistake he made. Even though he got in the number one spot, nobody really knows about him. Nobody really knows about his quirk ability, so obviously people 
people don't want to take that risk. Even if, okay, even if they know he was number one and he got all those points because it was incredible, it's still the point is nobody wants to take that risk if they don't really know what you're capable of. If you're too much of a mystery, people are going to just shy away from you and they're going to want to focus on things they, at the very least they know about. They know about these certain people and what they can do. And that's what this episode was trying to showcase, that Izuku, he made a mistake. Even though he didn't show his ability, he made a mistake even if he's number one because nobody knows what he's capable of, so... Yeah, they, they don't know if they can really say he's the best person to side with or be on his team. And, in a way, this is also a good thing, too. As we know, knowledge is a big thing about Boku no Hero Academia. And that, even though he didn't reveal his quirk ability, this is also a good thing. That means nobody knows what to expect from him besides his own class. And that would mean that anybody he faces in the future, they don't know what he is capable of, what he can do, what type of strategy he has. Nobody really knows. So even though he kind of fucked up by not revealing his quirk ability, it also was a blessing too, because nobody knows also what his quirk ability can do. So they'll be more on edge and trying to figure out what he can do. And that's what the entirety of Class B was doing, which they pointed out in this episode, that they threw the first match. They completely threw it. They just tried to stay in the first 40 spots, but they threw the match because they didn't want to really show off their quirk, they didn't want to be flashy, because the reason why is they wanted to, you know, analyze what Class A was doing, they wanted to see what they are capable of, what type of quirks they have, and so once they figure it out, they'll be able to use that against him and defeat them, so once again, knowledge is a big key factor in this series, that sometimes withholding your quirk ability could be a good thing or a bad thing, and that's really showcasing it in this cavalry battle, and why a lot of characters are getting fucked over, like someone like Bok Go, which is a really insane person, a really crazy character and powerful, how he got his, you know, headband just ripped from him because he was showing off and all that and he didn't pay attention to those around him he didn't really acknowledge or know about. And that's what this was doing. So, very good job with relaying the message. And I have to say that when it came to the delivery... I feel like this episode of Boku no Hero Academia did a better job than even the manga. I, I will admit that. I will completely admit that, that the delivery of this, all this knowledge, job well done, Studio Bones. So, another thing too, obviously, Todoroki has a problem with his father. It's common sense now with this episode. We've seen some subtle build-up and hints here and there throughout the recent episodes, but it's very apparent in this episode that there's something going on with Endeavor and Todoroki. Endeavor, you know, the fire guy with the big mustache and all that, and Todoroki, you know, our guy that can use fire and ice. He states that he won't use his other side. He'll only use, like, his ice, and obviously there is a problem building up here between his father and him, so that'll probably be dived into very very soon, but there's just some build-up going on, and most likely some characterization slash development for Todoroki is going to be coming very soon. So yeah, I mean, there's little details here and there throughout the episode for build-up for, you know, the overarching plot for the future, you know, arcs of the series, which I really like. I like all this little bit of setups here and there with the characters. I also like these side characters and how they're setting up for their future, you know, development and all that. It just, it's a really good thing to see with how, you know, Studio Bones is really appreciating this series and that they're going all in and showcasing that they really care about the writing of Horikoshi and they don't want to squander, you know, the series at all. They want to make a very quality series, and you can clearly see that. The way they show some of these scenes, the way they even add in anime original scenes, yes, they're even adding in anime original scenes that kind of dive more into these side characters that even haven't gotten development in the manga. I'm not even fucking joking. Like, Horikoshi does a good job, but you can only do so much with, like, you know, 19 to 20 pages a week. You can only do so much at a given time, but somehow Studio Bones has found a way to add in development slash characterization for these characters that haven't even been dived into yet, and I really hope this, you know, stuff we're getting with these characters that are getting their anime original scenes, Horikoshi takes this and adds it and applies it to his manga as well, because, like, the stuff with Conley, when you saw the man and how he was just trying to have a drink or whatever and he hits his mask, it just shows that, you know, how he is a rookie, and, you know, seeing these little scenes with Mount Lady as well and how she's discussing these certain things and how she became a rookie or whatever or a new hero just seeing all these little discussions with the characters and all that that are anime original it really makes me appreciate the writing of the series even more but also make me appreciate the anime even more as well because they're willing to go the extra mile to dive into these characters that i already loved and get get more details that we didn't even know about so just 
very good shit, Studio Bones. Good shit, good shit, good shit. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I mean, how do you feel about this week's episode of Boku no Hero Academia? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? How do you feel about all the development? How do you feel about what happened with, you know, Izuku having to work with Tokoyami? Which, you know what, before, before I go any further, I, I, I need to talk about my boy Tokoyami. Tokuyami is probably one of my personal favorites. I've made this very clear. Like, I have a couple of favorite characters. There's a lot of characters I really like. But Tokuyami is someone that I have enjoyed since the early stages of the manga. I pegged him as someone that was going to be a badass in the earlier portions of Boku no Hero Academia. Like, the first, like, 10 to 15 chapters. I was like, this man is going to be a fucking beast. Like, I want more of this character. His design to his quirk ability. Just a really good-looking character. I want more of this character. And... Just seeing this man having his own spotlight, how he's working with Izuku, how he's using his shadow, dark shadow, to just be a defense, like a big wall, to protect everybody. Just such a great scene, seeing that, seeing my boy Tokoyami just in the spotlight, just, yes! I love that character, I love Tokoyami, and seeing that man on screen always makes me just giddy and excited, because he's so cool, he's such a cool character, and being able to see this man animated, and being able to hear his voice actor, all that, it just makes me just smile, and I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much for animating this series, because we get to see my boy Tokoyami. <sighs> oh yeah, and another character too, Minita. So Minita, I know, and I noticed actually, that not many tend to like Minita, which makes a lot of sense, because I have heard it even from the manga too, I remember early stages, many didn't really like Minita because he's annoying or he's heinous or whatever, and it kind of saddens me a little bit, because if I'm correct, don't quote me on this, but I think Minita is Horikoshi, or one of Horikoshi's favorite characters, and it kind of saddens me that not many really care about Minita, or they don't like him on screen, he's annoying, and I'm like, this dude is so cool, yes, he's a pervert, but I mean, he's just such a cool character, the way he interacts with everyone, or how he uses his quirk ability, it's just so funny, and I mean... Uh, it saddens me that not many really care about him or whatever, even though he has his own little style to him that stands out. And how he lost his headband is... I, I don't know how you can lose your headband when you're in an impenetrable fortress like that. Just how, how can you? But still, Minotaur's a cool character, and it just saddens me many don't really like him. I've noticed that quite a bit, especially a lot more while the anime is airing. And it just... Hopefully many, you know, kind of grow more attached to Minotaur, and, you know, they don't keep shunning him and saying he's ass, so... Yeah. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.